Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using slope deflection method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span BC and span CD. There is also an overhanging span AB. In the overhanging span, there is uniformly distributed load 12 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the span BC, there is a point load 48 kN. It is acting in the center of the span. In the span CD, there is a uniformly varying load. It varies from 0 in the point C to 90 in the point D. In the points B and C, there are hinged supports. In the point D, there is a fixed support. The overhanging span is 3 meter long. The span BC is 6 meter long. Span CD is 4 meter long. In this analysis, we have to find 5 moments. In the joints, there will be two movements. In the joint B, there are two movements, MBA and MBC. In the joint C also, there are two movements, MCB and MCD. In the fixed support, there will be a movement. In the point D, there is a fixed support. Here, we have the movement MDC. So, totally we have to find 5 moments. Also, we have to calculate 3 reactions RB, RC and RD. In the slope deflection method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. In the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points B and C, there are hinged supports. So, the number of supports in which slope can occur is 2. In the point B, there is theta B and in the point C, there is theta C. So, in this analysis, there are two unknowns. If we calculate these two unknowns, we can easily find the final moments. To calculate these two unknowns, we need two equilibrium equations. The equilibrium equations can be made in the joints. In the joint B, when we add the moments, MBA and MBC, it will be 0. In the joint C also, when we add the moments MCB and MCD, it will be 0. In the joint B, we can easily calculate MBA because on the left of B, there is overhanging. In the overhanging span, there is UDL 12 kN per meter. Length of the overhanging is 3 meter. Now let us calculate MBA. For that we have to calculate the moment in the point B due to the UDL. When we multiply the UDL 12 with the distance 3 and a distance by 2, we will get MBA which is equal to 54 kN meter. MBA will be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us apply the value of MBA here. Then let us take 54 on the right side. It will come as negative. In this way we can calculate MBC which is equal to minus 54 kN meter. MBC should be negative because it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. In this analysis, we needed two equilibrium equations. 
and we have formed them. The first equilibrium equation is MBC is equal to minus 54 kilonewton meter. The second equilibrium equation is MCB plus MCD is equal to zero. Now let us calculate the fixed end moments. First, let us calculate the fixed end moments in the span BC. In the span BC, there is a point load 48 kN. It is acting on the center. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. In the formulas, let us apply the values. W is 48, L is 6. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us calculate the fixed end moments in the span CD. In the span CD, there is uniformly varying load. It varies from 0 in the point C to 90 in the point D. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 30 and WL square upon 20. Let us apply the values inside the formulas. W is 90, L is 4. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations. No need to make the slope deflection equations in the overhanging span AB. Only make the equations in the spans BC and CD. First, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. Here, let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of BC is 6 meter. Let us apply that also. In this equation, let us make the first equilibrium equation. We know that MBC is equal to minus 54. Let us apply that. Then let us take minus 36 on the left side. It will become as positive. Then let us add these two values. After adding, we are getting minus 18. This is our first equilibrium equation. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span CD. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of CD is 4 meter. Let us apply that. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta D will be 0. Finally, in the span CD, we are making two slope deflection equations. In this analysis, we need two equilibrium equations. We have already made one equilibrium equation. Now let us make the second equilibrium equation. We know that the second equilibrium equation can be made in the joint C. In the joint C, MCB plus MCD will be zero. We have already made the slope deflection equations for MCB and MCD. Let us apply them. Here, let us add 36 with minus 48. We will get minus 12. Then, let us take minus 12 on the right side. It will become positive. This is our second equilibrium equation. Let us keep this equation as number 5. Now, let us use the calculator and solve the equation number 1 and 5. After solving in the calculator, we are getting A theta B and A theta C. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. When we apply the values of A theta B and A theta C in the equation number 2, we are getting MCB. When we apply the value of A theta C in the equation number 3, we are getting MCD. Finally, when we apply the value of A theta C in the equation number 4, we are getting MDC.
In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. Now we are going to find the vertical reactions. Let us take the overhanging span AB and the span BC together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MBA and MBC, they will get eliminated. We have to consider only one moment that is MCB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to find RB. For that, I am going to take moment about C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. This UDL 12 kN per meter is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. The distance is 3. So minus 12 into 3. Then for the UDL, we have to find the centroid distance. Here the distance is 3. So the distance 3 by 2. We are taking moment about C. So we have to take this distance also. This distance is 6. So we have to add 6. RB is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 RB. The point load 48 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 3. Then we have a moment. This moment is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. After the calculations, we are getting RB which is equal to 63.33 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Using the rule, we can calculate RC1 which is equal to 20.67 kN. Now let us take the span CD and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span CD, there are two moments. MCD which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MDC which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to calculate RC2. For that, I am going to take moment about D. RC2 is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4. So 4 RC2. This UVL is acting towards the point D in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. For this UVL, we have to multiply the area with the centroid distance. We know the area formula of a triangle half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is 4, height is 90. Using the values we can calculate the area. Now we have to find the centroid distance. We are taking moment about D. In this case we are moving towards the right hand side. For this triangle the centroid distance towards the right is 1 upon 3 into breadth. Here the breadth is 4. So 1 upon 3 into 4. Then we have two moments. 34 moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. 79 moment is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. Finally we are getting RC2 which is equal to 48.75 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. RC2 and RD are acting upwards so both of them will be positive. The UVL is acting downwards so it will be negative. To calculate the total load from this UVL we have to find the area. We know the area formula half into breadth into height. Using the formula, we are getting the total load 180. 180 minus RC2, we will get RD. Now, let us add RC1 and RC2. After adding, we are getting RC. 
Now let us calculate the shear force values. I am going to start in the point A and move towards the point D. In this case I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. You can see the shear force calculations. Using the shear force values we can make the shear force diagram. Under the UVL we have to make the shear force diagram in the shape of parabola. Now let us draw the free movement diagram. To draw this diagram we have to consider every span as a separate assembly supported beam. In the free movement diagram no need to consider the overhanging span. In the span BC there is a point load 48 kN. It is acting in the center. The formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Here W is 48, L is 6. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 36. Using that, we can make this diagram. In the span CD, there is uniformly varying load. It varies from 0 in the point C and to 90 in the point D. The formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 9 root 3. In the formula, let us apply the values. W is 90, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 92.37 kN meter. This maximum bending moment occurs at L upon root 3. Here L is 4. So it occurs at 2.31 meter from the point C. For the UVL, the bending moment diagram should be in the shape of parabola. Now using the end moments, we can make the end moment diagram. Then we have to combine the end moment diagram and free moment diagram so that we will get the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.